Hey guys, welcome to That Florida Feeling. I hope everybody's had a great week. Um, I'm really sad it's almost the end of Spooky Month. Um, I like Spooky Month. It gives me an excuse to be weird and nobody knows the difference. Just kidding. I'm weird anyways and I don't care if you know the difference. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, thank you to everybody who has reached out and said hi recently. Um, I have made a lot of good friends through this podcast and I am thankful for each and every one of you. As a friend, a listener, or just someone who's passing through, thank you. Thanks to everybody who has posted on Instagram, Facebook, who has liked, shared, reposted on TikTok, or liked on YouTube. Still working on those shorts. I am excited, though, that the podcast is finally on YouTube. It's exciting. I do have to remember to go click every uh, podcast to public, because whatever reason wants to post private. But we're getting there. This is progress. We have progress. It's fine. I hope you guys have enjoyed some of the Spooky Month episodes. Uh, We did some paranormal. We've done some true crime. Uh, But we are going to end Spooky Month on the paranormal. Because next Friday starts November. I feel like Spooky Month went way too fast this month, guys. Actually, this whole year has gone too fast. But maybe that's just me. Maybe not. Maybe that's being an adult. I don't know. Either way. This, this week we are going to talk about one of the most haunted places in Florida. And if you ask people the most haunted place in Florida, they're usually going to say St. Augustine. No, I don't have Q on this week. And we're not talking about anywhere in St. Augustine. I'm also not talking about Key West. I'm actually talking about a place that if you have been to Florida, you've probably heard about it. If you've ever watched a certain ghost show... You've probably heard about it. If you've ever lived on the west coast of Florida, you've probably heard about it. But maybe I'm actually introducing you to a new, very haunted place in Florida, and that is the May Stringer House. The May Stringer House is actually home of the Hernando Heritage Museum, and it is actually a historic residential building in Brooksville, Florida. It's located at 601 Museum Court. And it actually used to be somebody's home. And it is a really nice home. Um, It overlooks the city of Brooksville. And it is a beautiful house. It is a four-story, seven gable. No, it doesn't have an. A green gables. Um, But it's a four-story, seven gable, gingerbread trim, 14-room, painted lady, Victorian-era home. One day I had to have a home that takes an entire sentence just to tell about it but this home this home first of all it's massive and secondly it's absolutely gorgeous the hernando historical museum association has actually created exhibit rooms with the victorian look and there are rooms devoted to specific themes such as an elegant dining room victorian bedrooms a military room an 1880s doctor's room which actually is kind of scary and a 1900s communication room And the museum actually contains over 10,000 artifacts that can be viewed. Granted, you may not have time to view all of them because that is an entire day's worth. But they're there and they're there for your viewing pleasure. So where did this house come from? Who built it? Why did they build it other than to live in? And what makes it so haunted? Well, in... 1842, the Armed Occupation Act, which we've talked about in other podcasts, mainly towards the Seminole War podcast, the Armed Occupation Act was ratified by the U.S. Congress and stated that any settler who came to Florida and lived on the land for five years, cultivated a minimum of five acres, and built a dwelling would be granted 160 acres. And a lot of people took up that offer, hence the Seminole Wars. But I digress. Richard Wiggins, a homesteader, decided that he was going to take up that offer. And he was going to go and live right where the May Stringer house is located. But in 1855, John L. May purchased the property and built a four-bedroom home for him and his family. And he lived in a simple four-bedroom house with him and his wife, Marina, and their daughters, Matilda and Annie. But unfortunately, John didn't get to enjoy the fruits of his labor or his purchase because he died of tuberculosis a short three years later. 
Marina, though, loved the area and was not one to just give up the property. Uh, she actually remained in the home through the Civil War and eventually, eventually married Confederate hero. I'm sorry. I just have a... I feel like that's an oxymoron. Okay, anyway, she married Frank Saxon. Unfortunately, though, Marina also didn't get to enjoy it for much longer. She died giving birth to the child, to the couple's child, a girl named Jessie May. She died in 1869. Jesse survived childbirth, uh, but died of unknown causes three years later. Marina and Jesse were buried on the property, as were John May and the infant, son of Frank and Marina, uh, a detail which actually fuels a lot of rumors about the May Stringer house haunting. So as you can tell, there's a lot of deaths on this property that already tend to fuel quite a bit of rumors about why this property may be haunted. And unfortunately, this is probably one of the most haunted houses in Florida. Frank Saxon eventually sold the home and property to uh, someone else. And the property eventually made its way down to Dr. Sheldon Stringer. Hence the second part of the name, May Stringer. The doctor decided that as much as he liked the house, he wanted it to be bigger. And I mean a lot bigger. This four-room house decided to be now a 14-room house as the doctor added 10 rooms to the house, giving it the Victorian appearance that it has today, hence the Victorian gingerbread trim. The estate also served as the doctor's medical practice for many years because nothing can go wrong there. After the death of the Stringers, the house passed from one owner to another to another to another until Dr. Earl Hensley and his wife Helen decided to eventually sell it to the Hernando Historical Museum Association in the 1980s. Actually, correct in, correction, in 1980, flat 1980. I do have to ask if it passed from people because it was already haunted, though. Like, I wonder if people didn't want to stay long due to its hauntings. Nobody ever talks about that. Now, the Maester and Your Heritage Museum is one of three museums operated by the Hernando Historical uh, Museum Association, but, of course, it is the most haunted and kind of most talked about in addition to the may stringer house the 1885 brooksville train depot museum and one room schoolhouse are run by the same association but you know not as well known on march 8th 1997 the house was actually added to the national register of historic places so it is a well documented well preserved house um, that is now a museum and you can visit it it's gorgeous it's really nice. It's actually got a lot of stuff that you can look at. Um, but it's extraordinarily haunted. Well known and well documented, like haunted. Like these are not just people walking in going, I didn't feel right. No, it's like well documented. And there's a lot of theories as to where these hauntings come from. Of course, there's already well-known documented deaths on this property. Of course, John May died on the property. Marina died on the property. The infant died on the property. And of course, Dr. Sheldon had his practice on the property. Um, and of course, there's also a rumor that uh, a sanatorium catering to victims of smallpox and yellow fever might have also been on the property at one time. All of that kind of tends to lead to the fact that that is a lot of death and a lot of death in one place and a lot of bad energy. So it's not surprising. Um, and really the rumors got fueled about this place being super haunted um, when they really started to restore the house. Um, it really started extensive restoration work when they acquired the house after this, they acquired it in the 1980s. Um, the hauntings really kicked off when they started to restore things in the 1980s to set up these new exhibits. And what was really reported was that the restoration volunteers really began to hear footsteps and voices in empty rooms. So of course, when they got it, the house was empty. They began to set things up and they were hearing footsteps and voices of people who weren't there in rooms that weren't filled yet. And of course, the people who were working on the property began to notice cold spots, mist, eerie shadows, and things go missing. And then it got to be a little more weird. 
they began to hear the sound of children's laughter go through the house. And of course, in a construction zone, there's normally not kids on a work site. Like that's a rule. Kids aren't allowed. Nobody under 18. And they would hear kids laughing. So that's kind of a red flag. And of course, these strange events persist today. Of course, construction and renovations have already happened. The museum is open. It looks fantastic. These exhibits are up. And yet you still get reports of moving shadows, glowing orbs, the sounds of children, not just children laughing, but children crying, eerie feelings. And so it's just hauntings that have persisted. Now, of course, a lot of people believe that the children are the young children of the first children that live there. And then the wailing children, of course, they believe that is Jessie May. Uh, calling out for the mother she never knew. And of course she passed away when she was younger. Um, people have described the wailing child though as absolutely chilling. Uh, this is a sound that people, when they hear it, they never want to hear it again. And I find that to be absolutely interesting that that is the one that's most described. Now, there's been a lot of research done on this property Obviously, because it's just, it's obviously just very interesting. Um, there's 160 years of history in this house, and they think that they have identified up to 11 different ghosts. Now, of course, we only know the ones that I've mentioned. So, where did these other ghosts come from? And, I mean, they've invited the paranormal in all the time. So, where are these other ghosts coming from? Are these possibly from that sanatorium? Are these possibly from the people who were nearby? Um, it has come to light in recent years that researchers have tried to find out if more than 50 enslaved people who actually worked the plantation might be buried on the museum grounds. Like, is there a possibility that they were buried there? And that's also what you're dealing with in this area. People also believe that one of the spirits that they see walking the grounds is Marina May herself. You know, they hear the daughter wailing. Is this the ghost of Marina May looking for her daughter? You know, other ghosts they believe are linked to just the story of the plantation life in Florida. But the ghosts that most people talk about and the ones that tend to bother people the most is one that's known as Mr. Nasty. And I find Mr. Nasty to be very interesting. Mr. Nasty has been said to curse visitors. Um, and I, I, like, if you research this ghost, he sounds absolutely awful. Um, and I really heard about it from watching Kendra. I, when I was doing research on this, like, you see that Taps, which is uh, Ghost Hunters, and then Florida Ghost Team, and then Kindred Spirits, They've all made stops in this house. That's how haunted it is. Like major people have come to this house to investigate this as well as smaller paranormal groups and just people in general. And of course this museum has a three ring binder that you can actually see. And they document more than 80 ghost hunting groups that have come and investigated this house and written down some of these things, but they've all talked about this Mr. Nasty. And Mr. Nasty just sounds literally very nasty. He tends to be a dark spirit. He tends to give very bad feelings. He tends to be a black spot in a black room. And if you can see a black spot in a black room that's darker than dark, then you know that's probably not something that you want to mess with. Um, and reports are saying that he's usually somewhere near the medical room, like the doctor's room. Um, which maybe he's part of an artifact. Maybe he's part of, maybe he's one of the, you know, the plantation life. Who knows? But it's very interesting to see that there's kind of a really interesting mixture of ghosts in this house that are reported. And it's the same ones that are reported over and over and over again. Um, that are always consistently come up. Now, if you want to go to the Maystringer house, you can. It's open during the day. But if you want to take a ghost tour, surprisingly, you also can as well. 
Um, you can actually take a ghost tour. Uh, they're offered by appointment on Friday and Saturday nights. You have to be 16. You can take a digital recorder camera or an EMF. Anything you can hold in your hand is fine. You can't set anything up. Um, it's $20. Uh, you can actually find it on the Hernando Historical Museum Association. Like, they're willing to let you do this. They're all in it. Uh, they also have a flat fee group tour. It's $250. Uh, the group must be there by 830. You set up, then you can set up your equipment. You can investigate till 2 a.m. And you have to get your stuff out by 230. And it's 10 people. So, you know, and they even say the house has been certified haunted countless times. They have the evidence to prove it. This is one of those places where I firmly believe that it's probably, probably super haunted. I have not watched any of the investigations. I did kind of flip through Kindred Spirits. Um, it was very interesting to see the house. Uh, I've driven by it. Gone to it. It's a beautiful house. Um, I mean, it look, you, know, you get a little feeling. I'm not going to lie. You get a little feeling. But, you know, I, I have to take all those paranormal shows, especially certain ones, with a grain of salt. Um but this is, this is the house that is consistently said to be haunted. Um, and it is about an hour north of Tampa. Uh, you go straight up 19 and you'll hit Brooksville. Um, but it's beautiful. Looking at the house on the outside of this, you would not guess that it is a super haunted house. It looks like a beautiful Victorian home that some family got to call their house and absolutely love. Uh, but then you find out how much death was on the property. You find out that they're buried on the property. You find out that there was a sanatorium and a doctor's office. And then you kind of find out, you know, the backstories. And you kind of might start to believe that maybe there really is something going on. You know? So, are you brave enough to go the hour drive out of Tampa and go to the May Stringer house. I mean, I, I want to go back soon. I think it would be a great place to go back now and to, to visit again. I'm not going to go at night. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I have no, no desire to go on another night investigation and ghosts don't always just come out at night. Ghosts have no problem come out during the day. Um, and that at this house, that's actually a known thing. They, they will make themselves known at any time. So if anybody's actually been to this May Stringer house also, other than me, I would love to hear your stories as well. But if you're looking for a new place in near Tampa to visit, check out the May Stringer house. It does hold a ton of artifacts that are amazing to look at that show life in Florida, basically from the 1800s all the way to the 1900s. Uh, so it's a really cool literal historical museum. Um, but it also is a really sad, sad history of different families who fell in love with a house that just didn't seem to be their forever home. No Florida man today, guys. Uh, I think that Florida man is probably out on the prowl giving, uh, everybody a run for their money right now. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you do live in Brooksville, I'm sorry for all the traffic you're probably getting right now with spooky month and dealing with the paranormal. Uh, I hope everybody is still healing well from the hurricanes that have come through. It's been a season. I'm glad it's almost over 30 days, guys. We got this. We got one month. We're going to be fine. Um, if you guys just want to say hi, I would love to hear from you. Uh, say hi on any of the social medias. Don't forget to check out unfiltered studios. Uh, there's some amazing podcasters over there. You can find uh, that Florida feeling uh, also on Unfiltered Studios. You can see that I'm in an amazing group of people. Um, also, Good Pods. If you guys have not heard of Good Pods, because I know you're probably listening on Spotify or Apple, go to Good Pods. Good Pods is one of those really cool slept on apps that have a really cool system of finding other podcasts. It's a really cool way to give thumbs up to show other people new podcasts. It's a really cool way to recommend. It's a really cool way to find new ones. They have great ways of recommendation. Like their 
their metrics are different than most sites. And uh, I didn't get on board at first, but I'm slowly falling in love with Good Pods. So I just wanted to kind of tell everybody about that one as well. So if you haven't checked it out, check out Good Pods. Uh, but guys, I hope everybody has an amazing week. Be safe out there if you do celebrate Halloween or Dio de los Muertos. Um, be nice, guys. There's plenty of assholes in the world. Let's not be one of them. Drink your water, guys. And as always, that's your daily dose of sunshine. This podcast is a production of Unfiltered Studios. If you would like to know more about joining Unfiltered Studios, please visit our website at unfpod.com for more information.